Howdy guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming Scenix, and in this video, we're going to play with some crackle paste. I'll catch you after this. So guys, in this video, I thought I'd do a video showing you what I do when I use a product I've not used for a very long time, or it's something I've never used, or it's a different brand and it feels a bit different. Because a lot of products that you use out there are normally the same thing. Some are slightly more concentrated or less concentrated or mixed with other things, so they do work a little bit differently, but they're more or less the same thing, okay? So this golden crackle paste is what I'm gonna demonstrate with and play with and learn how to use it. I've got some dioramas coming up later on where I'm gonna be, and, and commissions coming up where I'm probably gonna be using this for like dried riverbeds and stuff, and I want to make sure I get the best out of the product. And I don't want to be messing around and risking it on a board when I've got no idea, because the problem is with this, once you put it down and it's cracked, if it's really big, horrible cracks that you don't want, you need to know how to put it down first, and yeah, this video is gonna show you my processes of playing and what I do. So let's get the cameras down and let's figure out whether this product's any good or if it's me that's a load of crap. <laughs> I'll stay in a minute. So what I like to do first is get a load of bases. Now, just some little bases that can be wood, it can be plastic, it can be different surfaces are normally good to try. Now with me, I'm normally working on top of my modeling compound, MDF, or plastic. So what I do is I, I get like some plastic bases and I try it on that because out of everything that I'm using, products like this are less likely to stick to plastic than anything else that I use because compounds got a texture, wood's very porous, and it comes to something like plastic and it's neither of them. Um, so that's why I like to try resin or plastic when I'm testing things like the crackle paste. So I've got some that are primed and I've got some that are not primed. And I've got five. Now, the reason I've got five of each, prime and unprimed, is we're gonna do one thick, we're gonna do one not as thick, and we're gonna go do gradually down in, in thickness. And then the last one, we're gonna add some color to. We'll add some inks rather than paints. Um, it does say on the pot, you can allow up to 10% acrylic paint. So if I put 10% acrylic paint in something that's white, it's not gonna be a great deal. So if you want in a dark color, I don't think you're gonna be able to achieve it. Whereas if we use inks, which are acrylic, they should have a higher pigment, meaning we need a hell of a lot less. But we'll try that. And if I get really poor results with the inks, we'll try some paint. Um, but I always try inks first, because the higher pigment and you can normally get the color that you want with inks rather than acrylic paint. So let's get this pot open and let's have a, a look inside and see what it feels like. See where it feels like. That's a good one. Ew. Looks like an exfoliant scrub. Whoa, that's got ammonia in it. I don't know whether that's anything to do with the crackling. But anyway, so I'm gonna put some thick down on the, on the first base. And I'm gonna put this on about two mil thick. No, make the three mil thick, okay? So I'm gonna put this on about three mil thick. This is far too thick. I'm putting this on like I would like a filler on a miniature base, if we're going old school with it. So it's a bit overkill. And it spreads out quite nicely. And then the next one, just thinner again. This one's about a mil and a half, two mil thick. And then the last one uh, that I'm gonna do, just like this, I'm gonna apply probably about a mil to just less than a mil thick. And then on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it on really thin, as in almost like you do like a paint almost. Um, I'm not expecting much from this, but we'll see. So that's on there really thin. I mean, you can hardly tell that that's on there. So it's almost like a a thick layer of paint, if that makes sense. And on the last one, we're gonna stick some Pete Brown ink in from Windsor & Newton, and I'm gonna put some Windsor & Newton Indian black ink in the other one. So we can have a look at the colors that they go and how much they still crack with a small amount of pigment in them. We're gonna put a decent sized one down, 
And then literally all I'm going to do is just pour a small amount of ink on there and then mix that in. With it being brown into a white product, it's gone really pale, as you can see. Um, I won't add any more for this test. What I'll do is I'll, I'll put this on a base and then I'll add a bit more and I'll put it on another base and we'll see how they crack differently, okay? So we'll get this on a base first. With the pigment in, it does spread a lot better. And on the other one, we'll apply it the same thickness, but I'll add more ink. And as you can see, that's gone more like a, a paint, like a thick paint. It's more like chocolate spread. Um, and I'm putting this on about a mil to a mil and a half thick, like the last one. So we'll see how that cracks up, because that's very similar to other ones on the market. Right, the next one, we'll add some black. This is just Winsor & Newton acrylic black ink. Um, I'll put all the links to the product used in the description and doobly-doo below. And mix this in. And black always takes well. Um, you never need a lot. Um, I maybe put a bit too much black in this one. So what I'll do to compensate is I'll add a bit more paste. So what we'll do is we'll put, um, again, a decent amount on, like a 1.5 mil thick amount. And then the next one, we'll just add a drop more ink and see if that has a different effect with it having more black ink in, even though I've just thrown the ink everywhere. Then we'll put that on, same thickness. Again, this is more like paint than a paste. Um, so it's a lot thinner but I, I don't know how that's going to react. However, that does feel like the Games Workshop stuff. Um, it's more like a thin paint that cracks, so. And hopefully if that one works, we can generate whatever color we want and make whatever crackle paste we want for, like volcanic settings, like lava coming through and paint the base first. There's lo loads of things we can play with. Right, now we've done the paints, we've done the different thicknesses. Um, now I'm going to add some sort of texture to it. Now what I'm going to be adding is uh, the Geek Gaming Scenics Tropical Beach Sand from my range. Now, you could add any sand, but the reason I'm adding this is this is super fine. It's 0.2 millimeters thick, um, so it's like mega fine sand, okay? And that's one reason why we sell it. Um, so I'm going to mix a small amount into this with a paste and see if we can get like a crackle, like a, surf, a texture plus cracking, because that's not something I've actually seen uh, before. So I'm going to add the uh, Tropical Beach Sand into the paste to see what sort of texture we get. Right, so now we've got that uh, with the sand in, I'm going to put that on the base about 1.5 mil again because that's where it directs on the, on the pot. Um, but we're going to put it on without colour and then I'm going to put some on with colour and see if we can get like a coloured texture crackle paste. That'll be interesting. goes down differently. Um, it goes down more like a texture paste, like, you know, your gritty, like your grit and your fillers and stuff. It goes down like that. It's not as easy to apply. Um, it's sort of thickened it up quite a bit. So it's a bit more of a fast to use, but you could get some nice ground texture in. So we'll put some ground texture in while we're playing because it's, I don't think I'm going to be able to get that smooth. So we'll put some ground texture on. Right, and on this next one, I'm just gonna add a tiny amount of color. And it's more of a gray brown, so I need, to, I need some darker brown inks. <laughs> but anyway, we'll try it with the ink and the texture and we'll see how that dries. So guys, now they're done, I've named them um, so you can, so I can remember tomorrow when I come in. Now, on the back of the pot, it says, where did I read it? <laughs> right, well, it says allow up to three or more days to allow the cracking. Um, so what a lot of people have probably been doing with this crackle paste is leaving it overnight and going, well, it ain't crackled. Um, it does say leave it up to three days, which I didn't know. 
Um, so this video might be going out a bit late. But what we're going to do is I'll leave it overnight um, and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Um, and if it looks like it's starting to crackle, I'll leave it till end of day and we'll have a look and then I'll just put this video out on Friday. Um, <laughs> and then we'll see what they've properly cracked like in three days. Hopefully this is going to be a good result. Um, but the three day thing for me, that's going to really slow me down unless I did it on Friday and left it for a weekend. <laughs> Um, I've never read that on any of the crackle paste. You gotta leave them for three days. Wow. It also says not to accelerate drying, so don't stick them on a radiator or use an air dryer. Just leave them at room temp, like 18, 20 degrees, and just let them crack naturally over three days. So, next time you see me, it'll be in three days' time. I'll see you then. So I've left them to dry, and, uh, We've got some quite interesting results. Let's take a look. So the really thick one, the 2.3 or two, well, sorry, sorry, two to three millimeters, I've actually shrunk and warped the plastic base, well, resin base. Um, I mean, it's pretty solid resin this and it's pulled it and warped it, uh, which just I thought were quite strange. Um, however, the cracks in there are there, but they're really big and there's not that many of them. Of them. Um, we could get in there, maybe widen them a bit, but putting it on thick doesn't work, so we know that. Two millimeter worked a little bit better, however, we haven't got a great deal of nice cracks in there. We've only got some where it's actually built up a little a bit. Um, so being in between the three mil and the 1.5 as directed, it's, it's not worked. Um, it's worked okay, just not amazingly. Now, the one as directed on the pot that says 1.5 millimeters, so like a mil and a half, we've got a really nice cracked finish. The only issue is, is because the base isn't primed, it's quite delicate and it comes off, okay? So, we have got some really nice cracks. It does work at 1.5 mil. So when I come to using this product, on a board or on a diorama or anything, that's the thickness I'm going to be using it at. But I will be putting paint and everything else over it, which will lock it in place. So the really thin didn't work. And one thing that I have found from this as well is the unprimed bases, it hasn't stuck to at all. I mean, look at that. It's just brushing off. And when it's on really thin, it does crack, but it, it, it wish, and, I wish I'd have tried it thin um, and on primed because if it had cracked like that on something thin and stuck, it might have been quite nice. So we should, we'll play with that later. Now with the small amount of inking, it's actually cracked quite strangely. Um, it is quite thicker in areas is this test, um, but it has cracked okay. It's just not done the little sort of cracks that we want, like what we're used to from, like the Games Workshop crackle paste. Um, but we've got an okay effect for like a larger area. So if I spread that a little bit thinner, it might work. But what is surprising is the the thinner, the one that I did a bit thinner that had more ink cracked quite well. I did knock this and <laughs> some, some bits have chipped off. Um, but if I can bend the plastic a bit, you can see all the very nice cracks in this. So with a bit more playing, we should be able to get a nice consistency of thinness of the product with colour to get a nice cracking effect because that has got real, loads of really nice cracks in that which are very usable for basing. I'm quite, I'm onto something there um, and I think with a bit more playing I should nail that. Now the one with black inking and spread thinly has come out awesome. I really like that for like sort of like a volcanic sort of cracked earth. Um, so linking that with like my volcanic earth base ready, that's going to work awesome. Um, so if we painted the base like red and orange first and then we'd put that on and then we put like the volcanic earth sands and stuff on, that's just going to look immense. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the, the black ink. The pigment's strong because you don't need as much and it's cracked great. Um, and working around the 1.5 mil is a, a, a must. Now, the one where I put far more black ink in, it's hardly cracked at all. We've got a couple of hairline cracks. I don't even think you can get them to show on camera, um, but 
it's not worked. And adding sand in, as much as I'd like it to work, it's not. <laughs> um, adding the texture to the paste and cracking would have been amazing. We have got some area of cracks. As you can see, there is some cracking. So with texturing, I think we're gonna have to thin it, like either make it a little bit thinner on the base, um, but then I don't know, a bit more playing. But I'm happy with what I've found in this test, as in it's only very subtle cracking, but it would look nice, them subtle cracks on a textured base. So with a bit more playing, we might, we might nail that. Right, so what this video is getting at is literally playing with the product that you, you're going to use and you like, learn to use what you've got. If you buy something and you're not happy with the results that you get just from throwing it on something, don't discount it try loads of different things. And a little test like this, you learn a bit from it. Now, I'm happy with one result that I got, two results maybe, they need tweaking. But from what I've learned from playing like this, I know that working at a thickness around 1.5 mil is a necessity. Adding a bit more ink to make it more of like a, maybe a thick paint sort of consistency. You don't get as many defined cracks, but you get loads of very nice little cracks, which works very much like the Games Workshop one. However, it's just not as defined, but that's to do with the ratio that I've put the ink in. So I just need to play with the amount of inks in the paste. And once I nail that, I'm sure I'll be very happy. The only issue with this is I can't, I can do videos showing you different things that I do and explain how I'm getting things, but, what it boils down to is you playing with the product and learning yourself because a lot of this is going off how you spread it and getting the thickness of it. I can't really explain that or show how I've done that on camera. It's more of a just learn the products, guys. And if you get one from like Art Deco, for example, or is it Deco Crafts or diff different companies that make these sort of texture pastes and things, they're all gonna work slightly different, even though they might be the same core product. Some will have different mediums in, like I said, this is, it's got an ammonia smell, so the, the ammonia solvent in this, where I've had them before where they don't smell like ammonia. So they're all gonna work slightly different depending on the makeup of the product. So sit and learn how to use it. And once you've learned how to use a product, you'll love it no matter how crap you thought it was originally. And I do this with a lot of things. If I buy something and I don't like it, I do put the time into learning to like it or learning a, something I can use it for. So if you take nothing from this, at least take back that if you play with the products that you've got, I'm sure you'll get far better with that product the more that you practice and play and experiment with it. So if you've liked this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe as you already do. If you want to support the channel and keep me doing videos like this, check out all the links below where you can buy all the scenics from my shop uh, for building all your boards, your dios, and even just basing miniatures. If you want to support me any other way, all the products in this video have been linked below. Um, and also if you want to buy like your games workshop and your, your other third party miniatures, check out Element Games. Um, you can shop on there, buy the models from them. I get a bit of a cut and it doesn't affect your pocket and the, one of the cheapest shops in the UK that I can find at the moment. So yeah, it helps me out and you'll buy some cheap models as well. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I will be getting some dioramas and stuff out soon um, and some building videos, but a diorama didn't go the way that I wanted. So I've had to put this in place of that video this week. More on that and I will show you the fail that happened later on. All right, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again for the next video. Love, love, love. Lee, Lee, you know what? I've never actually read the back of any product ever. You can't even read, Luke. Well, I can't read, no, but it tells you how to use it. <laughs> yeah. You learn so much from reading the back of products. It's interesting, though. Well, I'm enjoying it. And that's what matters, I'm enjoying it. I look like I've terrified a squid. I've got ink all over my table.